I had asked Brother Allen last night, he said, I was going to sing a song, and I asked him what we're going to sing, and I already had a thought in mind. The greatest thing that any one of us could give this lady would be to give her the assurance that we're going to meet her on Saturday. If she could speak back this morning, and you can say, is there anything I can do for you? Her reply would be, meet me inside you. Amen, yes. May, may Christ wish up. Over in Luke, the 13th chapter, the 21st, it reads like this, that there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets and you yourselves thrust out. Wouldn't there be something if we got right to the gate and we see Abraham and Isaac and all the prophets and there's those loved ones that we know serve God and help them for all those years and we see them over there rejoicing and saying, well, I don't know that that can happen. Well, when he told the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, from hell he lifted up his eyes. Huh? And he saw him in Father Abraham's bosom. I believe one of the greatest torments of hell will be knowing the opportunity that we had to serve the Lord and make him our shepherd. And we turn to the side. I believe that continues to go through our minds in hell. This morning we want to just an old fashioned altar call. And if you don't know Jesus this morning, Mrs. Simple is coming down here. And I know that you've heard his voice. He said, Brother, I haven't felt anything in this service. From a child up, there's been times God spoke to you. I can speak of my own life. Even as a kid, I was raised in a Christian home. But there was times that God would speak to my heart. And I would push it aside. And there was even times as a teenager that I tried to make bargains with God. Not knowing if there was a God. But just tried to make bargains. And you know, a lot of times those things came to pass. And I believe it was simply God proving to me that He was. But I never really knew till I humbled myself in an altar and asked Him to forgive me of my sins. When I got up from there, I knew that there was a God. There's not enough demons in hell to make me never doubt God. Because I know what he's done in my life. The greatest thing we can give her this morning would be to let her know that we're going to meet her inside the gate. Amen. Is there one here this morning that God's dealing with your heart? Just one that you feel like you need to make things right? You want to see Mama? Granny? Sister Cruz again? If things is not right, we'll never. Enjoy her presence again. Things aren't right for you this morning. I believe this is what she would have us to do. Is give you the opportunity to come down here. And all you have to do is fall in an altar and say, Lord, let me hear your voice. Let me make you the shepherd of my life. You don't have to be wise. You don't have to know all the ways to serve the Lord. You've got to be willing to hear his voice and let him lead you. He will guide you and teach you. And always the truth that we can have that reunion after a while. If you're here this morning, you don't know why not stand out and come to this altar. These, these folks are here, these preachers are here, they'll pray with you. They'll pray with you. They can't pray for you. They'll pray with you and help you to touch the Lord. You might be here this morning and say, Brother Bill, I'm saved, but there's some things in my life that I just can't seem to get victory over. Why not come down here and ask the Lord to sanctify you, to give you enough power with Him that you can hear His voice enough that you can lay aside those things that you know that's not right in your life. Amen. And maybe you're here and you say, well, Brother Bill, I don't really see anything in my life. Why not come down here and say, God, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with the Spirit till it's running over. Amen. And you know, I know how to I don't know the Sunday services that I stood in church. That preacher would give that invitation. I hold on to the fact that I knew my mouth was turned away. Because I was a big old little feller, I knew the way we did this ball where I come from. And there was something that made me know if I went to that altar, I was going to break down. And I fought it, didn't want to go. Amen. And 
Let me throw this at you before I close. I remember as a young boy, I don't know, nine years old maybe. But I wasn't old there. Back then, you know, I mean, I'm 70 years old. And back then, if you went to Glen St. Mary, it took a long trip. Because all we knew was just right around our neighborhood. And Brother O'Berry took me, and I found out later that it was Glen St. Mary's Campgrounds for Congress of Holiness. Found that out after I was saved, pastor in church. But he carried me down there to a camp. Old sawdust floor, amen. Brother Willie Nally knows all about it. Most of you that's from out that way know Sister Cruz, you know about it. You know what I'm talking about. But here I was, a little heathen boy. My family didn't serve the Lord, and I went to church. But Brother Oldberry would take me to church when I, my parents would let me go. And he came down there to a camp, and I was sitting on the front pew over there. And the Spirit of God come down, and those people were shouting, and there was folks here at the altar and crying, and weeping, seeking God. I didn't know if there was a God. And I thought to myself, I'm sitting there, I thought, well, I could slip in there, and nobody would know. Nobody would know that I was in there because all the people down there praying. Brother Birch, I got up off that pew and I eased over and I got down to that altar. And I began to weep and I couldn't control it, Brother Birch. Just something come over me and I began to weep for the Lord. And I didn't understand it. Didn't know what was happening. And I got up and sat down on that pew. Because, see, nobody noticed it. Whenever I was 28 years old, my life was all out of shape. I could see myself getting like my dad was, and he was an alcoholic. And I could see my children starting to go through what I went through as a kid. And I said, I don't want my children going through what I went through. I found an old fashioned altar in the Baptist church. That same spirit that I felt. As a nine-year-old boy, I began to feel again. Big old ugly 28-year-old man weeping and falling. Just like that little boy did back there. But this time I didn't need nobody else to notice. I was old enough to notice for myself that there was one making a change. I'm trying to introduce you to the shepherd this morning. I'm not trying to help you to find my Jesus. I don't want to see anybody miss help. So I'm going to ask you if you're real this morning for the sakes of God. I want you to come together around the front of this church and let's seek the Lord. Let's come pray this morning. And as they come, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, why don't you just slip right in with them? And if nobody else notices, the shepherd will. Oh, the shepherd will. Yes. So why don't you this morning, saints of God, would you meet me in this altar? Will you come? Let's pray. And as they come and pray, if you hear His voice and He's dealing with your life, get up and just come right with them as they come. Come down here. If you hear Him knocking on your heart's door, come open that door to Him this morning. Come surrender to Him this morning. Let's just move. Let Jesus know. You're going to hear that voice and you're going to meet Him after a while. Inside the gate, not outside, but inside of that gate. Hallelujah. Would you come? Would you come meet us this morning? Our nation is in a mess. We're in trouble. The saints of God need to get up and die. Amen. Would you come this morning? Praise the Lord. Would you